102,000 engines. That is the number that currently haunts the boardrooms of Toyota City in Aichi Prefecture. It is a number that represents not just a recall, but a fundamental crack in the bedrock of the world's most valuable automotive reputation. For decades, the Toyota badge was synonymous with immortality. If you bought a Tundra, you weren't buying a truck, you were buying a multi-generational asset. You were buying a vehicle that would outlive its warranty by a factor of 10. But right now, across the United States, Thousands of 2022 and 2023 Toyota Tundras and Lexus LX600s are sitting in service bays. Their hearts, the complex V35A FTS twin-turbo V6 engines, declared dead on arrival. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, has flagged a catastrophic failure mode involving machining debris leading to main-bearing seizure. This is not a sensor glitch. This is not a software update. This is a total engine replacement program that some analysts estimate could cost Toyota Motor Corporation upwards of $5 billion in logistics, hardware, and brand equity erosion. But here is the mystery that no one is talking about. Toyota's production system, the TPS, is the envy of the manufacturing world. It is the gold standard of quality control. So how did the most disciplined carmaker on earth allow metal shavings to remain inside the crankcases of their flagship truck engines for nearly two years of production? The answer lies in a decision made in 2017, a secret internal pivot regarding EPA regulations, and a gamble on complex turbocharging that might have just backfired. By the end of this documentary, you will understand exactly why your Tundra's engine might be ticking, why the V8 had to die, and the extreme engineering lengths Toyota is now going to in order to save the Tundra nameplate from extinction. To understand the gravity of this disaster, we must first look at the ghost that haunts the new Tundra, the 3URFE. This was the 5.7-liter naturally aspirated V8 that powered the second-generation Tundra from 2007 until 2021. That engine was a dinosaur in the best possible way, it was over-engineered, thirsty, and effectively bulletproof. There are documented cases of three URFE engines hitting 1 million miles with nothing but oil changes and an alternator swap. It built the reputation that allowed Toyota to charge a premium over Ford and Chevy. But inside Toyota's engineering headquarters, they knew the V8 was living on borrowed time. The United States Corporate Average Fuel Economy, or CAFE standards, were tightening. The target set for 2025 and 2030 made it mathematically impossible to keep a large displacement, naturally aspirated V8 in the lineup without paying massive regulatory penalties that would destroy the truck's profit margins. The decision was made to switch to the V35A FTS, a 3.4-liter twin-turbocharged V6 hybrid architecture. On paper, it is a masterpiece. It produces 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque in the iForce Max configuration. That is significantly more power and torque than the old V8. It uses laser-clad valve seats, a technology derived from Toyota's F1 program, to improve cooling and intake efficiency. It utilizes a D4S injection system that combines direct and port injection. It is a marvel of modern thermal efficiency. But complexity is the enemy of reliability. Here is where the forensic engineering begins. The current recall, NHTS number 24V381, identifies a specific defect in the manufacturing process at the engine plant in Alabama. During the machining of the engine block, debris, specifically metal shavings from the boring process, was not adequately cleared from the oil galleries before assembly. In a simple engine, this might get caught by the oil filter, but the V35A is not a simple engine. It operates at extremely high pressures with tight tolerances to manage the twin turbo setup. When this debris circulates, it doesn't just scratch a cylinder wall, it migrates to the main bearings. These are the bearings that hold the crankshaft in place. Once debris lodges there, it disrupts the oil film. Under the immense torque load of a truck, that friction creates heat. The bearing seizes, the connecting rods knock, 
and eventually the engine throws a rod or simply locks up at highway speeds. This is a critical safety hazard, which is why the federal government is involved. But the financial implications are staggering. Replacing a short block is one thing. Replacing a complex twin-turbo hybrid powertrain long block in a dealership service bay is a logistical nightmare. The cab often has to be lifted off the frame. The labor hours alone are astronomical. We are looking at a bill that could range from twenty dollars to $30,000 per vehicle when you factor in parts, labor, rental cars for customers, and shipping. Multiply that by 100,000 units. The math is horrific. Let's step back and look at the market context. When Toyota launched this third-generation Tundra, they were attacking the Ford F-150 Power Boost and the Ram 1500 directly. They needed a win. The truck market in the U.S. is the single most profitable segment in the automotive industry. Ford's F-Series alone generates more revenue than companies like Nike or Coca-Cola. For Toyota, the Tundra was their attempt to break the domestic stranglehold. They moved production to San Antonio, Texas. They marketed it as born in the USA. But this engine failure strikes at the core of the value proposition. If a Ford breaks, people shrug and say, it's a Ford. If a Toyota breaks, it is a betrayal. The stock market reacted swiftly. Toyota's ADRs took a hit as news of the recall spread though the company's massive cash reserves buffer them from immediate insolvency. However, the long-term damage to residual values is the hidden killer. Fleet managers, who buy trucks by the dozen, calculate total cost of ownership down to the penny. If the resale value of a 2022 Tundra tanks because the market fears the engine, fleet buyers will move back to the F-150 or the Silverado immediately. But we need to go deeper into the engineering. Why did the debris issue happen? Sources indicate that the cleaning process for the engine blocks was changed or optimized during the ramp-up of production to meet high demand. The V35A engine block is a complex casting with intricate oil passages designed to cool the turbos and the pistons simultaneously. These passages create blind spots where swarf and machining chips can hide. In the old V8, the passages were larger and straighter. In the new V6, they are labyrinthine. The cleaning protocols that worked for the V8 were likely insufficient for the V6, yet they were carried over or inadequately updated. This is a classic case of process legacy failing to catch up with product innovation. It is the exact same trap that caught Boeing with the 737 MAX, taking a legacy philosophy and applying it to a radically new, more sensitive hardware environment. Furthermore, let's talk about the main bearings themselves. There is chatter in the automotive engineering community that the bearing material choice for the V35A was optimized for low friction to meet fuel economy targets, rather than the heavy-duty durability of the past. While lead-based bearings are a thing of the past due to environmental regulations, the aluminum-silicon alloys used today require perfectly clean oil. They have zero tolerance for particulate matter. The 3URFE V8 could probably digest a small metal shaving and keep running because its tolerances were looser and its bearing surfaces were more forgiving. The V35A cannot. This suggests that Toyota engineered an engine that was perfect in the lab, but fragile in the chaotic reality of mass production. Now, let's look at the fix. Toyota has announced they will replace the engines, not fix them, replace them. This is the nuclear option. They are acknowledging that the contamination is likely systemic in the affected blocks and cannot be flushed out. This decision, while expensive, is the only way to save the brand. It recalls the Lexus LS400 launch in 1989, where a minor recall was handled with such concierge-level service that it actually built loyalty. Toyota is attempting to do the same here. They are betting that if they make the customer whole, completely and totally, they can retain the loyalty. But there is a bottleneck. Where do 100,000 new V6 engines come from? The factory in Alabama is already running at capacity to build engines for new trucks rolling off the line in Texas. To service the recall, Toyota has to divert production capacity. This means fewer new Tundras can be built. 
This creates a supply shortage which drives up the price of new units while the value of used units plummets. It is a paradoxical economic squeeze that hurts both the dealer and the consumer. We must also consider the hybrid component. The iForce Max system sandwiches an electric motor between the engine and the 10-speed transmission. When you replace the engine, you are decoupling this high-voltage system. This adds a layer of danger and complexity to the repair. Technicians need specialized high-voltage training. The risk of assembly error during the engine swap is non-zero. A factory-installed engine is done by robots with perfect torque application. A dealership-installed engine is done by a human, often under time pressure. The secondary failure rate of replaced engines will be a metric to watch closely over the next 24 months. Let's pivot to the competition. Ford has had its own issues with the EcoBoost cam phasers. Ram has had manifold ticking issues. General Motors has had lifter failures in their V8s. No one is immune. But Toyota was supposed to be the exception. That was the Toyota tax. You pay more, you get boring, but you get reliability. Now that the reliability is in question, the value proposition erodes. The new Ram 1500 is dropping the Hemi V8 for the Hurricane inline 6 twin turbo. They are watching Toyota's disaster very closely. They are seeing exactly what happens when debris management fails in a high-tolerance forced induction engine. Toyota is effectively the canary in the coal mine for the entire industry's transition from big V8s to downsized boosted engines. But there is a silver lining, a piece of data that the doomsayers are ignoring. The 2024 models appear to have a clean bill of health. Toyota implemented a process change in the manufacturing plant in late 2023. They changed the machining and cleaning protocols. We have verified reports that the debris issue is strictly limited to the specific production window identified in the recall. The 2024 Tundra, like the one we are featuring today with its solar octane paint and TRD Pro off-road hardware, utilizes a block that has been subjected to the revised cleaning standard. This suggests that the V35A design itself is not inherently flawed, but its manufacturing tolerance was violated. The engine is capable of doing the work. It just demands a level of clinical cleanliness that the factory floor wasn't providing. What does this mean for you, the consumer? If you own a 2022 or 2023 Tundra, you are in a state of limbo. You are waiting for a notification. You are driving a truck that might seize up on the highway. My advice? Check your VIN immediately on the NHTSA website. If you are affected, park the truck if possible, or drive it gently until the remedy is available. Do not tow heavy loads. Do not push the turbos. If you are in the market for a used Tundra, avoid the early build dates of the third generation entirely, unless there is documentation of the engine replacement. If you are buying a 2024 or 2025, the data suggests you are safe, but the stigma will remain. You might be able to negotiate a better price because the dealer lots are getting heavier with inventory as public perception sours. This is a pivot point in automotive history. It marks the end of the lazy engineering era where displacement solved everything. We are now in the era of high stress efficiency. Engines are smaller, spinning faster, hotter, and under higher pressure. The margin for error is effectively zero. Toyota learned this the hard way, to the tune of $5 billion. They broke the cardinal rule of the Toyota production system. Do not pass a defect to the next process. They passed 102,000 of them to the customer. However, Toyota is also the company that survived the unintended acceleration crisis of 2009. They have a culture of Genshi Genbutsu, going to the source of the problem. They do not hide, they fix. The sheer scale of this engine replacement program is proof of that commitment. A lesser company would have fought for a repair or a software limp mode patch. Toyota is giving you a new heart. That matters. As we look at the 2024 Tundra TRD Pro, standing tall on its 33-inch Falcon Wild Peaks, looking aggressive and capable, we have to ask, is the king of reliability dead? Or is he just undergoing open heart surgery to survive the modern world? The V8 is gone. It is never coming back. The V6 twin turbo is the reality. The debris is being cleared. The factories are being scrubbed. The question remains, 
Will the American consumer forgive Toyota for this stumble? History says yes, but the wallet is a fickle thing. For now, the Tundra remains a capable beast, but it carries a scar, a $5 billion scar that serves as a warning to the entire industry. Complexity has a cost, and sometimes that cost is paid in reputation. This is the new reality of the automotive world, adapt or seize up.